Woohoo! Tonight we're going to be talking about laws of logarithms. Yay! And for this section, I want to remind you of the laws of exponents to allow us to develop some laws for logarithms. The idea here is that logarithms actually simplify a lot of very complicated calculations if you learn how to use the laws of logarithms. And it was common before calculators were available that folks would use a lot of logarithms to calculate large numbers, multiplications, um, and other, other sorts of uh, calculations. So the three main laws of logarithms we're going to be focusing on are that if you take log base A of a product, A times B, capital A times B, then you get log base A of capital A plus log base A of capital B, which is surprising that the log of the product is the sum of those logs. But I'll remind you that when you have two exponents that are added together, what you really have are the bases multiplied together. And so that's where this rule comes from. And then here, log base A of the ratio, so A divided by B, is log base A of capital A minus log base A of capital B. And again, if you have with exponents, A minus B as an exponent, that means A is on top and B is on the bottom and you've got a ratio. So these rules of exponents are why these rules of logarithms exist. Now there's another rule and basically it comes from the first one and that is if you have log base A of some number to an exponent, weirdly enough, the exponent comes all the way down and sits in front of the logarithm. This is going to make things so much simpler in many, many cases. And this simply comes from the fact that b to the cth power is just a product of b's. It's b times b times b times b, etc. And since the logarithm of a product is the sum of those logarithms, you've just got a bunch of log of b. How many do you have? You have c of them. So the c comes down in front. So what do we do with this? Well, in this section, we're just going to practice. And so to practice it, we're going to use these laws to come up with some clever simplifications. So what's clever? Well, here, and let me write it a little bit bigger so it's very clear what we're doing. I've got log base six. Now, log base six is only going to be easy to calculate if we've got powers of six. So let's look at, let's see, six to the first power is six. Okay, six squared is 36. Six cubed Six raised to the third power is 216. And then I could multiply times another six, and then six to the fourth is 1296. So these are the numbers that are going to be easy to work with with logarithms, right? Because, pardon me, squirrel, log base six of six is how many sixes in that? One. You got it log base 6 of 36, because that 6 squared is 2. Log base 6 of 216, 3. Log base 6 of 1296 is 4. Right, so basically if you know your powers of 6, you can work out your logarithms base 6. 108, nowhere on the list. 2, nowhere on the list which is really frustrating. It's like, ah, how do we do this? And the answer is, well, if I have two logarithms and they have the same base and I'm adding them together, I can just multiply those two arguments. So what, if, what do I do here? Both log base six 
So this is equal to log base 6 of 108. And since it's multiplied, or since it's added here, it's going to be multiplied there. And how does this help us? Well, log base 6 of 108 times 2 is 216. Log base 6 of 216 is 3. So there, this is going to be a section full of sneaky tricks. So you want to be thinking in terms of the base. So whenever you're given a base, be thinking what are the important powers of that base and how can I take advantage of these rules. So let's take a look at this one. Now this one says I've got log base 4 of 16 minus log base 4 of 4. And back up here, we've got, if I've got same base and I'm subtracting two logarithms, I'm really taking the ratio. So let's look at this. Log base 4 of 16 minus log base 4 of 4 is log base 4 of 16 over 4. Now, what is 16 divided by 4? That's just 4. And what is log base 4 of 4? How many 4s in 4? 1. Woohoo! There you go. Okay, let's keep going. I know, this is so fun. It's like a big puzzle. Okay, now, sometimes we're going to ask you to practice, but we're, it's not going to be nice or obvious or easy. All we're going to say is use the laws of logarithms to expand these expressions. Does that mean we simplify? Not necessarily. Does that mean it's going to be nice at all? Nope, not necessarily. It just means it will get longer. That's all it's going to do. So let's take a look at this. Let's see what we can do. I've got log base 3 of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at what's going on inside. 36 is not a power of 3. But what is a power of 3? 9. You're right. So I'm going to try to come up with a 9. 36 is 9 times 4. And that's times x squared. Now if I have things multiplied inside the parentheses... If I have things multiplied inside the parentheses, I can break them out separately and add them. What does that mean? So if I have log base 3 of 9 times 4 times x squared, then that means I've got log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 4 plus log base 3 of x squared. And I know everyone's looking at that going, oh my goodness, thank goodness we wrote it like that. That's so much better. It isn't necessarily better, but we are expanding it and we're practicing the formula. So that's that's what this is for. Occasionally, something nice turns up like this. Log base 3 of 9 is log base 3 of 3 squared. So here, log base 3 of 3 squared, that's just 2. Right? How many 3's in 3 squared? 2. You square 3. Okay. 3 and 4, nothing in common. So we're just stuck. This one does not simplify or reduce in any sort of nice way. Now, why didn't I write this one? Well, even though we don't know what x is, we have x raised to a power. And I'll remind you, one of the laws that we haven't used yet is that if you have an exponent on this argument here, b to the cth power, the c comes down in front. So since I've got x squared, the squared's going to come down in front, and I get 2 times log base 3 of x. Now, is this simplified? Mm, not really. It's expanded. And we did, we were able to squeeze out this nice two that came out of the logarithms, but the other two are kind of stuck. So it won't always be simplified. It, always, it won't always be satisfying, but it's practice.
Okay, you ready for the next one? The next one's a bit of a bear. Okay, I've got natural log of the quantity A times B on top and the cube root of C on the bottom. Okay, so that tells me I've got the ratio. So I've got natural log of AB minus natural log of the cube root of C. Okay, can I expand this any further? That was a good first step. The second step is going to be, I see that I've got two things multiplied together, squished together in a logarithm. So I'm gonna split these out. The A and the B get separated. Now here, this is annoying me because cube roots are sometimes annoying. I know I can write this as one third exponent, but as soon as I write it as an exponent, I can do something. I can take the one third out in front. So that means I've got the natural log of A plus the natural log of B minus one third the natural log of C. And again, is this nicer or simpler than this? Mm, it is expanded and we've practiced. So that was the goal of this one. Woohoo, you guys are doing great. Okay, one other thing I want to go over in this section, oh, pardon me, squirrel, is there's one other, it, it's not really a law of logarithms, it's called the change of base formula, and it's pretty amazing. It says that if you have log base A of B, that that's just common log of B over common log of A, or natural log of B over natural log of A. Now, why is this helpful? Well, it's helpful because, now, depending on what calculator you have, some calculators are really fancy and they have all the logarithms. You can do any logarithm you want, but this one only has common log and natural log. So if you do get an interesting log, like log base three of 38, pardon me, squirrel, if I want to evaluate log base three of 38, it's, I do not have a log base three on my calculator, but I could choose common log or natural log. And so I could say, oh, change of base. Come here. There we go. Log base three of 38 is common log of 38 all over common log of three. Okay, let's calculate that. Now on this particular calculator, it can be tricksy. What I want to do is I want to take log of 38. Now make sure you close the parenthesis or else you end up with logs inside of logs. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to divide by common log of three and close that. And then I get, let's see, what is that? 3.3110736131, some other stuff. And it doesn't say what to, um, how to round it. So I'm just, I'm going to leave it like that for this. Keep in mind, change of base doesn't have to be common log. It could be natural log. And this I think is really cool that the ratio of the logs is what's important. So we could use log base 10 or log base E. So let me go ahead and clear this and let's try it with natural log and check to see. So I've got natural log of 38, close parenthesis, divided by natural log of three, again, close parenthesis, and I get, ta-da! Now, is it possible that your calculator in very small details at the end, depending on how old it is, is it possible that it won't exactly match? Yes, there could be rounding error. There could be, uh, depending on how your calculator calculates things, um, it's possible that you'll see a slight difference. Officially, there should not be a difference. If you see a difference between the two versions, it means that your calculator has rounding error. That's all. Okay, you guys made it. We did the laws of logarithms. 
Yay! Woo! Congratulations! So, next up, <laughs> surprise, surprise, more logarithms. But before that, please take a break. Go, um, go rest your eyes. Go look at beautiful things or, you know, make beautiful things or, or look at the inside of your eyelids and take a nap, get a snack, have some vegetables, whatever it is that delights you. And uh, know that I think you're amazing and incredible. And I hope you math on and woohoo.